We're also watching here from Wilmington, Delaware as well, where we're expecting live remarks from President-elect Joe Biden on this situation. We'll bring those to you live here. My colleague Daytona Everett also read a statement from the press secretary of the White House, Kayleigh McEnany, who said the National Guard is on the way, along with other federal protective serv services. We reiterate President Trump's call against violence and to remain peaceful. And we just lost that shot. We apologize there. That went to black. This is a ground view. And just to give you a sense of where this is in the Capitol, this is the east, east or excuse me, the west facing front. And this is essentially the driveway where, kept, where senators, uh, this is the Senate side, where they come in and they drive under what's called the, uh, the lamplight gate there to go into the chamber. I myself have stood out there many times waiting for senators to come out to get comments on legislation or what have you. Never have I seen anything like this. And we've also been following all of the responses to this uh, on social media, the pictures people have been posting. Reporters are still there. Remember, the Capitol's on lockdown. People cannot leave or enter. And remember, this process still needs to play out constitutionally. The joint session of Congress needs to take place still for Congress to certify the electors, the slates of electors from the states. Normally in years past, this process merely takes 30 to 40 minutes. You remember back in 2017, after the 2016 election, then Vice President Joe Biden presided over the chamber. You remember in the year 2000, in the 2000 election, afterward in 2001, the loser of that election, then Vice President Al Gore, presided over this process even as the loser of the election. You remember in 1961, Richard Nixon, then vice president, presided over this process as well in that joint session as the losing candidate against John F. Kennedy. We have another shot as well, that black suburban looks like more Reinforcements coming in. We're going to show you two shots. Bear with us here. On LTN3, there's, there's TTG, and they're starting to see some National Guard vehicles in the back starting to roll in. Okay. You want to just keep your eyes. I'll, I'll try to look you in. But they're, okay. They had some in the distance, so they're starting to roll in. And we do have uh, President-elect Joe Biden is coming to the podium. We're going to take that right now in full. But I'm sorry for the reason we've delayed. I've delayed coming out to speak to you. I initially was going to talk about the economy. But all of you, all of you have been watching what I've been watching. At this hour, our democracy is under an unprecedented assault, unlike anything we've seen in modern times. An assault on the Citadel of Liberty, the Capitol itself. An assault on the people's representatives and the Capitol Hill police sworn to protect them and the public servants who work at the heart of our republic. 
an assault on the rule of law like few times we've ever seen it. An assault on the most sacred of American undertakings, the doing of the people's business. Let me be very clear. The scenes of chaos at the Capitol do not reflect a true America, do not represent who we are. What we're seeing are a small number of extremists dedicated to lawlessness. This is not dissent, it's disorder, it's chaos, it borders on sedition, and it must end now. I call on this mob to pull back and allow the work of democracy to go forward. You've heard me say before in different contexts, the words of a president matter, no matter how good or bad that president is. At their best, the words of a president can inspire. At their worst, they can incite. Therefore, I call on President Trump to go on national television now to fulfill his oath and defend the Constitution and demand an end to this siege, to storm the Capitol, to smash windows, to occupy offices, the floor of the United States Senate rummaging through desks, on the Capitol, on the House of Representatives, threatening the safety of duly elected officials. It's not protest, it's insurrection. The world's watching. Like so many other Americans, I am genuinely shocked and saddened that our nation, so long the beacon of light and hope for democracy, has come to such a dark moment. Through war and strife, America has endured much. And we will endure here and we will prevail again and will prevail now. The work of the moment and the work of the next four years must be the restoration of democracy, of decency, 